Does the US Air Force already have an even more advanced stealth bomber in the works? One so capable, it could even replace the B-21 Raider? That's the question many have been asking since Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin seemed to backtrack on previous Air Force statements, suggesting the branch was going to expand its purchases of the B-21 beyond its initial contract for 100 airframes to potentially as many as 250. But last week when General Alvin was asked about pretty much exactly that, he suggested that the branch would likely stop at 100 B-21 Raiders in favor of an even more capable platform to come. Now, based on traditional aircraft development timelines, that would usually suggest that the Air Force already has a new design in the early stages of development. But I'm here to say that that's probably only partially true. So let's talk about the B-21 Raider and the future of this advanced bomber program. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Ground News is a great way to stay on top of the news while cutting through media bias, thanks to the way that they aggregate news stories from outlets all around the world and place them in one easy to read feed. I use the Ground News Discovery page to select topics that I'm interested in. And then by clicking on the My Feed tab, I can get a curated list of stories specific to my interests. Like this one about NASA Chief Bill Nelson warning that there is a very blurry line between Chinese civilian and military efforts in space. And in fact, he believes that military programs are being obscured behind civilian efforts. Over here in the coverage details portion, I can see that 19 outlets have already covered this story, with fairly even distribution across the political spectrum. Ground News is my first stop every morning because it makes it so easy to stay on top of stories like this. And it can be for you too, for a real bargain. Go to ground.news slash sandbox with two X's, or just follow the link in the description below to get 40% off the same vantage plan that I use in my research. Again, that's ground.news slash sandbox with two X's to get 40% off the same vantage plan I use to stay on top of things. The US Air Force is already exploring ideas for a platform to come after the B-21 Raider. Earlier this week, Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin made headlines around the world when he said the Air Force has committed to purchasing 100 B-21 Raiders. But before they considered buying any more than that, they need to think about the platform that will come after it. Now this obviously caught a lot of people's attention. The B-21 Raider is widely touted as the most advanced aircraft on the planet, easily the most capable stealth bomber ever to fly. So if the Air Force already has something in mind to come after it, that must be a pretty capable platform. And the truth is, that's not only true, but it makes a whole bunch of sense. Let's talk about why. Development on the B-21 Raider started in 2011, a year after Northrop Grumman began work on the still highly secretive RQ-180, another stealth flying wing platform with a pretty similar plane form to the B-21. And despite all the secrecy surrounding the RQ-180, as near as we can tell, it's been flying since 2010 and been in service since 2015. Now I've argued in the past that one of the reasons the B-21's development has gone so well with this program on time, on schedule, and actually getting cheaper as it progresses is because a lot of the technology found in the Raider was originally developed for the still very secretive RQ-180. They just had to migrate it from one platform to the other. In fact, using this render for the RQ-180 released by the US Air Force Profession of Arms Center for Excellence, we can see that the RQ-180 and B-21 Raider have a whole lot in common. But to be fair, that is a bit of an oversimplification. The B-21 Raider is not an entirely new aircraft concept, but it is really a collection of many of the most important technological breakthroughs in stealth aviation to emerge in the past 15 years or so. Meaning that a lot of the B-21's development isn't about inventing entirely new systems, but rather improving upon the stealth systems found in today's most advanced stealth aircraft, like the F-35. In fact, despite the fact that we don't yet know if the B-21 has two engines or four, the running rumor in the aerospace community is that it's powered by upgraded versions of the F-35's Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan engine, which 
would make a great deal of sense. Not only is it the most powerful turbofan engine ever affixed to a fighter, but it also comes with significant technological leaps in things like infrared or heat mitigation to prevent the aircraft from being detected or targeted, not just on radar, but also via infrared targeting or heat-seeking systems. But we are talking about a much larger and more complex aircraft than an F-35, so while Lockheed Martin can pump out around 150 F-35s a year, Northrop Grumman will likely be building the B-21 at a rate of around 10 per year instead, meaning that 100-unit order will likely take until the late 2030s to fill. And by then, both the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy intend to be operating sixth-generation stealth fighters that have yet to emerge, and are sure to come with a number of other significant breakthroughs in stealth aviation technology. Now that's really important, because while the B-21 Raider is primarily a strategic nuclear and conventional bomber, this aircraft is actually much more than that. In fact, the B-21 is meant to fill a wide variety of roles that the B-2 Spirit, its own predecessor, never could have imagined. Now, the Air Force has not offered much in the way of specifics regarding the other capabilities the B-21 Raider will fly with into the fight, but they have issued some very interesting statements. I'll start with one made by Air Force Chief of Staff General David Elvin back in 2022. Quote, the B-21 could be the delivery platform for precision ordnance, or there could be other roles that it could play, whether it be sensor or whether it be accompanied with different types of collaborative combat aircraft. It has the capability to do some very unique things, and those unique things may not fall into the traditional put bombs in the bomb bay, go as deep as you can, and drop bombs playbook. And just a few months later, at the December 2022 unveiling of the B-21 Raider, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin made similar remarks, this time offering a bit more detail into the secondary roles the B-21 may fill. Quote, The B-21 is multifunctional, as it can handle anything from gathering intel to battle management to integrating with our allies and partners that will work seamlessly across domains and theaters and across the joint force. Now, this all speaks to the B-21 Raider's incredible degrees of situational awareness and ISR capabilities, or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities, likely derived directly from the RQ-180. Now, in the past, I've argued that what makes the RQ-180 such a valuable platform is not just its ability to be a high-flying, stealthy spy plane, but also its ability to collect data not just from its own sensors, but from a wide variety of other sensors affixed across a wide variety of other platforms, in the air, on land, and at sea. It can then fuse all of that data data into a single battlefield perspective that it can relay via that same data link back out to all military assets in the battle space, effectively giving all U.S. and partner forces in the region a real-time God's eye view of the battle as it unfolds. Now, this has huge implications for the future of warfare, and many of them fall within the broader scope of the Air Force's ongoing effort to replace what are currently called kill chains with newer and more advanced kill webs. Now, a kill chain is, broadly speaking, just the process a military would use to effectively attack a target. And that kill chain is usually split into six separate steps that are usually completed by six separate platforms or individuals. Those six steps are find, fix, track, target, engage, and assess. So let's quickly summarize these steps and some of the platforms that you might use for each one. Though, to be clear, in some operations, you might be able to do more than one step with the same platform. Starting with detecting a target, which you might do with an RQ-4 Global Hawk flying a high-altitude ISR mission. But from there, you need to fix its position or pinpoint exactly where it is. Maybe you do that with the powerful onboard sensors of an E3 Sentry or another AWACS-type aircraft. Then you need to track that target, especially if it's on the move. And you might be able to do that by sending in an MQ-9 Reaper to keep tabs on that target as it does whatever it's doing. 
Then you need precise target coordinates, which you may be able to get from the MQ-9 or another aircraft, or maybe you get from a Joint Terminal Attack Controller or JTAC operating on the ground. From there, it's time to engage the target. Now, this could come via an F-35 or a B-2 Spirit or an F-16 or really anything else for that matter. But after you've engaged the target, the final step is to assess the efficacy of your attack, which you might do using satellite imagery or another ISR aircraft like an MQ-9. Now, as you might imagine, with so many moving parts, creating and maintaining an effective kill chain on the battlefield can be a pretty complicated process at times. And the US military has invested heavily into technologies meant to streamline this kill chain process, not just making it as effective as possible, but as quick as possible. Because the faster you can close a kill chain or take out a target and assess that you did, the more effective you'll be on a battlefield. So, as you might imagine, adversary nations like China have not only been investing heavily into kill chains of their own, but also into new technologies meant to obstruct or collapse American kill chains on the battlefield. And this was the driving force behind some of the biggest differences in the B-21 Raider and its capability set over its precursor in the B-2 Spirit. Despite the fact that the B-2 still looks like a very futuristic aircraft, it started flying more than 34 years ago. In fact, the B-2 first took flight just three months after the Nintendo Game Boy hit the market. We're talking about a time where an 80 megabyte hard drive for your computer, enough to store about three and a half minutes of video today, would run you north of $1,300 in today's currency. So despite the slew of updates and upgrades over the years, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise to you that the B-2 is really only equipped to serve as one step of that kill chain, just the engagement portion, relying on other aircraft, satellites, and other sorts of platforms to do the other five steps. But thanks to the advanced sensor suite found in the B-21, it can serve as the entire kill chain all on its own. Now that's obviously a huge step toward overcoming adversary efforts to disrupt American kill chains. But the other way the B-21 is equipped to engage with this problem will have an even bigger impact. And that is by enabling the Air Force and the DOD at large to replace kill chains with kill webs. Now a kill chain is linear. It's a step-by-step -step process conducted usually by a variety of platforms. And if you can interfere with or obstruct the function of one of those platforms, well, you just severed the kill chain and potentially prevented an attack. A kill web, on the other hand, aims to increase the number of possible kill chain pathways within a battle space by connecting a much larger number of sensors and platforms to one another to increase the resiliency and redundancy of each individual kill chain. If one platform in a kill chain is obstructed or destroyed, the sheer number of other platforms and sensors in the battle space will allow that kill chain to progress by by shifting to a different platform or sensor that can meet the same requirements. Effectively replacing the time-honored and obstructable kill chain with a sort of self-healing mesh network. Now the Air Force has dubbed their effort to field this kill web the Advanced Battle Management System, or ABMS. Now this system aims to create a next generation command and control system using cloud environments, new communications and encrypted data transmission methods, and artificial intelligence to enable faster decision making on the battlefield. And while platforms and systems of the future will be developed from the start to be incorporated into this advanced battle management system, the platforms and systems in service today we're not. This is the reason the F-35 is so commonly referred to as a quarterback in the sky. Thanks to its powerful onboard computers, it can collect data from all of these disparate sensors and platforms, fuse all of that data into a singular battlefield view, and then redistribute that singular battlefield view to all of those disparate sensors and platforms, allowing them all to see the battlefield with as much clarity as the F-35 can. And if the F-35 is a quarterback in the sky, then the RQ-180 and B-21 Raider 
are offensive coordinators. With even more onboard computing power, even more access to live data and intelligence, and even more command and control capabilities. These platforms can operate undetected high above the battlefield, collecting and relaying data not just from other aircraft and surface combatants, but from satellites up above via high bandwidth satellite data link. And because of that, it can not only keep everyone on the battlefield better informed about what's going on, but it can also keep command elements a world away just as in the loop. So as you might imagine, being such an integral part of this kill web of the future, the B-21 NRQ-180 will need to adapt to stay at the forefront of a variety of emerging technologies. And as such, it seems less likely that General David Elvin was referring to an even newer stealth bomber design in the early stages of development, and more like he was probably referencing the fact that this platform and the family of systems that it's a part of we'll have to see iterative improvements as time wears on. So then what would the B-21 successor look like? Well, I'd argue probably a lot like the B-21 we see today, but with significant changes under the skin. Back in 2022, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall announced that the Air Force wants to field fully automated drone wingmen to fly alongside the B-21 in the same sorts of missions, effectively a stealth drone version of the B-21, which itself is said to be optionally manned. But then later in that same year, the Air Force rolled that claim back, saying that it would likely be too expensive to field those drones alongside these bombers. But by the late 2030s, with 100 B-21s already on the tarmac, the Air Force may want to shift production toward those uncrewed B-21 variants that would fly in the wingman role and all on their own not unlike the RQ-180 does today. Now, doing that would mean leveraging the technology being developed right now in the Air Force's Skyborg program, which aims to equip sixth-generation fighters with AI-enabled drone wingmen. But there's lots of other technology in development right now for sixth-generation fighters that could very easily find its way into a B-21 successor design, especially because the B-21 design itself was meant to be modular. In other words, making it easier than ever to remove components and replace them with brand new ones. One big contender in that category, if you ask me, are the new adaptive cycle engines in development right now, with GE in the XA100 and Pratt & Whitney in the XA101. These new engines promise to offer a huge boost in thrust and fuel efficiency, providing more speed and more range than ever before, all while offering a big boost in electrical power production for new weapons, like lasers. So to put it simply, the Air Force is well aware of the fact that they're actively developing technology that aims to change the face of air warfare. And once that technology is operational in a new generation of fighters, it only makes sense for it to find its way into another new generation of bombers as well. 